Today we're going to try and get the pistons out. I have the book open. I think we got to take the balance shafts out first, which doesn't seem too complicated. I just kind of skimmed over it, but we get the two balance shafts out. And I think from right from there we can take the pistons out. We might have to take off this upper oil pan thing, but either way, I'm trying to get those pistons out today. Uh, we're getting pretty close to the end of the year here. And I want this, this thing broken down all the way. Um, I hit up my, once this stuff's out tonight, I'm going to hit up my buddy and uh, discuss what he thinks and then you know, this box of stuff I'll have to take to the machine shop. I'm hoping to do here within the next two weeks, get this stuff to the machine shop and however long that takes, go back, pick it up and then hopefully start the reassembly. Hopefully that head's good, hopefully I don't have to replace the valves. Um, yeah, if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the last video, it'll be linked at the end of this video. But uh, let's get started. So in the book for uh, balance shaft, there's literally like two steps here. Um, remove the water pump um, cog and then a couple T30s and they should slide right out. But the issue right now is this cog right here. Um, lighting, lighting, lighting. You can see it right there. It is an M10 triple square but uh you gotta like hold it and once you spin it like the other side spins and putting a tool in there doesn't do anything because that bolts stationary so gotta use some some grippy boys here and hold it still shouldn't damage it at all only thing that goes on it is this belt so it should be just fine hold it nice and tight and we'll break that loose okay so i felt really dumb there the book does not tell you that it is reverse thread so me loosening it was tightening it and I went to the install of the balance shaft and in there it tells you that um, it's reverse thread. So you ever go to do this water pump cog thing on the balance shaft with a really odd bolt and it's obviously, it's not gonna focus I don't think. But oh yeah, you can kinda see where the thread pitch changes. I almost snapped this damn thing. So beware. All right dudes, now that uh, it's off. Hopefully this is a lot more simple. So, oh yeah, this is a different. That one was like, what, an M10? This is an M, or no, M8, I think. This is that. This will be an M10. You said pop it right off. Says just to pop these two T30s out, and there should be a seal, so that was super easy. Freaking baby. That is neat. Hit hit the screen for me so it focuses. There we go. Wow. So this is the exhaust side. No, this is the intake side. Yeah. Really cool. Wow. And it's already oh no. Okay, that's independent. So there's that. You got these bearings. Really neat. Like this thing like splits apart it looks like so you can replace it. Oh, it's just under pressure in there so it stays. That's cool. Really neat stuff. This one doesn't want to come out. I'm gonna like kind of rotate a little bit. Assuming they're gonna look pretty dang close to one another. And they do. Oh, this one has like a longer tail on it. Can you zoom out a little bit? So, that's good. This 
exhaust one has a longer tail. This is the one, this is where the, uh, that water pump cog goes. So you can kind of compare them here. How long the shafts are on the end. Bearings look the same. Um, now this, the exhaust one's just longer in general, I guess. That's cool. I thought these would be a little bit more difficult to take out, but very neat. All right, so looking at the book, it says before you take the pistons out, you got to take off this upper oil pan. I was hoping to get away without it, but you got to do what you got to do. So we'll flip this around. Flip this real quick. Scratch more the mess can make. It says do the oil pump first, which should just be these three T30s. Take that out, and then we have a whole sequence I'll show you guys on um, taking this off. Oh no. Dang. So two of the bolts from the engine stand go into this pan. Shoot. Well, how are we going to get away from that? Huh. This will be interesting. Alright, um, it's showing here, looks like just three T45s, some, some thick boys, and there's not all that much torque on those either. Surprisingly, there's not a lot of torque on a lot of stuff. I'm not following the book for this, so I don't even know if I'm doing this right. Gonna learn today. Imagine your gasket on it. You gotta watch enough Jimmy Oaks to know. Remove oil pumps. You guys watch Jimmy Oaks? You guys saw how B Hall's engine what was it? What's the motor out of the E36 M3? I think is what he had in there. But the the guide or whatever for the oil pump gear <laughs> failed. And it caused it to jump timing and all that, destroyed his motor. Pretty crazy, and they even welded it. And it's still fucking messed up. Well, um, it's a mess. There's a screen, uh, some oil. Let's see if I can get this over here onto the camera without making too big of a mess. So what the bottom looks like, just those three T45s. And uh, when I turn this, Things turn and oil wants to leave, so I'll leave it at that. Well, after taking a couple minutes to clean up here, I got my boy Maddie, and she's going to loosen the bolts on the engine stand while we hold the motor and then put it on the table, I guess. So this will be interesting. I'm just going to slap on a time lapse and hopefully we don't drop it. <laughs> So if you guys ever go to uh, take your motor off the engine stand, definitely bring two friends. That thing was heavy as heck. And having this small little area here, I about tripped and fell and dropped everything. Not really that serious, but um, got the motor on the table here. And rear main seal's gotta come off first. I got that Iabed billet boy, and I got it from FCP. So I'll order another one from them, the seal itself, and then, uh, Send the old one back, get my money back. I'm glad I did that. Um, we'll go ahead and eat this off and then we'll start. And like I said, there's a sequence to getting the pan off and then we'll, uh, we'll do that. All right, got all the bolts out of this bad boy. Boom, there we go. Rear main seal, nice and billet-like. Eye bed, boom. Nice, shiny. Clean a bunch of sealing off this thing. We got so much cleaning to do. All these parts I've taken off, I haven't really cleaned much of anything yet. It's gonna be a good whole day of just removing seals, cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. All right, now I think we're ready to do this. And uh, that's the order. Uh, one, two, three, yep, yep, here we go.
All right, so we got all the hardware out. The only one that was kind of tricky is here on the side. Um, it's like right in the middle above the rear main seal right here. I just had to put an extension on the T45 that we're using. It looks deceiving because of the machine work over there anyway. Um, you can get it with just an extension in the middle in there. Not a big deal. Next up, it says to pry it from the transmission side. There's little slots right here. And right here, we can stick a screwdriver in and pry it up. I already pried it a little bit, but I saved some for you guys. You can hear the sealant. I like the sound of it. It's like peeling the, uh, what's it called, like the cellophane, the plastic off a new phone or a new electronic device. Lots of sealant, boom! Clear access. This thing's like aluminum. I'm not gonna make the same mistake and flip this over on top of the motor, but uh, it's definitely aluminum. And there's just a whole bunch of sealant I get to clean up. Some more so. so this is all pretty freaking neat i know i've showed you guys the bottom here before but not without the upper pan on obviously because we just took it off so um yeah there's uh some connecting rods and a crank pretty neat you got like uh a magnet that reads the spacing here so it knows you got a little uh there you go crank position sensor i'm assuming you got sealant that goes around there, sealant that goes around this whole thing. Um, the steps in the book literally just say, hey, there's no like specific, just break them loose and pop them out the top. So I'm going to take the caps off. I'm going to wipe them off first and try and mark them one, two, three, four. And uh, not that it really matters, but yeah, we're just going to pop all those off, give them all a little push. Since it's on here, I'm going to have to tilt the motor and all that, so we'll see how this goes. And then getting the crank out should be super easy. I still need to order bearings for the rods and the crank, but I'm going to wait till the machine shop uh, measures things and tells me exactly. There's so many different, I don't really understand it. Maybe some of you guys can explain it. I don't think you can just get like OEM, can you just use OEM rod? And crank bearings. I understand the crank, yeah, because the rods I'm changing, so you use the same bearings. I don't think so, since they're the IE rods. I don't know. I got some learning to do, but let's get to it. Sorry, the lighting lighting is kind of poo here over the table, but we'll go ahead and if it even wants to go on. It's the angle of that is not. Oh boy. There we go. It definitely takes it was probably the highest torque string so far on the, the breakdown of this motor. Once again, a reminder here, uh, I'm not a professional. I've never done this before. So taking this cap off, I don't know. I've only seen it on YouTube. There you go. That's what that bearing looks like. Um, I'm gonna go with, it's not too pretty, there we go. All right. All right, so I just gave it a little push and it just like fell all the way down, so. I still got the three other caps to take off, but I'm going to lay the motor on its side. Um, that way I can just zoop these off real quick and then pop them out. So it doesn't look like there's no sensors or nothing over here. I'll try and just walk this. Man, these things are made out of iron, right? Oh boy. This thing is heavy. I'm not kidding. Um, so that's flat. I think I can just get in here and give the rod a little push. Can you guys see out there? I'm gonna have to grab an extension to push on it. Give it any light. Be careful 
not to touch the crank. Ooh. Oh, you know, you guys can't see that, huh? Look at that. Look at how close that came to falling off. Holy crap. Okay. Note to self, have her there when you're doing that. All right, we're nearing the end of this video. I went through all the walls here, felt them all. I, I don't feel any nicks or anything. I mean, it's getting bored out regardless, but here you get a good look at the oil squirters. They need to be taken out and the crank needs to be taken out. And then that's all that's left. Crank, oil squirter, I got a couple like, uh, you know, little things that need to come off there, but what we really came here to see today, hopefully the lighting's doing decent here. There we go. All of the bearings look the same. They have this like black streak going up the center. All of them pretty much look identical. Just like that, but they're smooth. They're all super smooth. I don't think they look bad. I filmed them all and they're just like, I mean, they're all, like I said, super smooth super smooth same with um, the other side there they all look roughly the same they're all smooth it doesn't matter anyway because I'm not reusing any of this but it does go to tell how well the motor was or wasn't running um, these this one I actually dropped on the ground when I popped it out my bad but uh, now you can really see this carbon buildup. I mean, it is nasty, nasty. It is gross. I don't know, really. So, I mean, going around above the top ring should be fine, right? But then we got some carbon buildup that made it below that first ring. I don't know if that's good, bad, ugly. Otherwise, you guys can tell me. Um, like I said, I'm not a professional. I've never done this before. But uh, And like the play, I did not realize how much play there would be like right here, you can really like wiggle them around. Didn't know that that was a thing. This is the one I dropped on the ground, but it looks decent. Some of the carbon buildup fell off. There's that one. We've seen those two. This one. This one's probably the cleanest one I got. They don't look terrible. One of them had like a decent amount of carbon buildup after that first ring. Which one was it? I think it might have been this one. Yeah, there was like a good bit right there. I scraped some of it off when I was showing her. But that like that hole where it's brown right there, there was quite a bit. I'm assuming it was just getting past, you know, the ring right there at that gap. Um, but as much as I abuse this motor. I mean, if you if you guys are new here and haven't seen much of the racing videos, like some of my autocross videos, I am literally like on the rev limiter for a good amount of time, like 32 pounds of boost on the rev limiter, first, second gear at autocross constantly. Like um, a lot of the times it's more beneficial time-wise for me to stay on the limiter rather than the shift and then have to downshift um, afterwards and lose time. So I do, I still on the rev limiter quite a bit, um, not during like drag racing or anything, but autocross, I definitely do. So I'm really surprised that there wasn't more damage in this motor or something like catastrophic earlier in its life. The motor, the motor was not broken at all when I pulled it. The only reason I pulled it was because of that, well, now built transmission, but because of the transmission. So we got um, half mil bigger pistons in there, um, i.e. rods, Ferrera, Valve train, new IE guides and uh, what are they? Guides, um, valve stem or yeah, valve stem seals and all that stuff. So like I said I just need to order bearings and a few odds and ends, rear man seal, um, clutch bolts, um, get my injectors clean and get the new seals put on those for the direct injectors. Handful of other things, but um, three of these pistons will be given away with shirts when that goes live. I was trying to have that done before Christmas, but we went and got pictures done with the shirts and then um, they're edited. Shout out to her, she got them done. They look great. Maybe I'll drop one right here. Um, but yeah, it's coming. We're coming, it's coming, I promise.
anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you guys think about how the bearings look, and uh, maybe you'll get a lucky uh, piston here when the shirts go live. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the flip-flop. Also, here for the MVPs at the end. Um, I really appreciate everybody that messages me, tell me they want to buy merch, tell me uh, suggestions on parts and this, that, and the third. I really, really appreciate it. Peep that big ass tree. The boys outside? Give them a little pup date. Come on, there you are. What's up, biggers? What's up, Jay Z? I can't touch y'all because my hands are all oily. What's up, Apex? What's up, dude? You want to sit? Oh, good boy. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Good boy. Jay-Z, sit. Sit. Jay-Z. Hey. Attention. You're just so cute.